organization in Washington, D.C. called Africare. And what they do is they take care of mostly things like water and all different countries in Africa. They're an American company, but they go into Africa. And uh, Nelson Mandela was a huge part of the organization. So uh, at the end of 2010, they gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award, and I felt honored that they commissioned me to do the piece. So this is basically him dealing with a couple of tribes in the Valley and the Hosa, and what, how he's revered and looked up to all over the world by young and old. So that was this piece. I worked with the Deltas for a while on some fundraising events, and I ended up doing some more research on them, and I painted this piece celebrated the Deltas of sorority called Crimson and Green. So that's my little Delta. <laughs> Make sure they know I've been a little part of there. Right. This is a piece of called Turks and Caicos Sunset. Um, a lot of times I get inspired, especially if I get a chance to go to another country, and generally that's going to be some place where it's got a beach and it's warm and it's Caribbean, or sometimes I've gone to actually Tahiti five times as well. But um, this is probably about five years ago. Yeah, no, not, yeah. I, I can remember by how old I am. Um, I decided to wake up someplace I had never been before for my 60th birthday. So I went to the Turks and Caicos and spent a few days and did a lot of um, just looking at outer islands and taking pictures. And this was the first painting I painted from that series. So Turks and Caicos Sunset. Um, I've done several commissioned artworks for colleges and universities. And this is one from uh, actually a college in Orange County, a uh, community college in Orange County, California. Uh, so this was a piece that was representative of people from all cultures of the world. They had something like over 100 different countries and people represented that went to this school. A lot of them were really beginning to just learn how to speak English and whatever, but this is their graduation is always under balloons, like a, a canopy of balloons. So these are primarily professors and the graduates coming down the center and the family. Uh, a friend of mine uh, opened a clinic in LA. Oh, by the way, uh, all of these paintings are, are actually a little larger than the reproductions. These are the reproductions of G plays on camera that looks the most like an original. This painting is three by four feet. And a friend of mine was opening a clinic and she asked me to do something for, for her office. And she had just come back from New Orleans. And I knew that. She said she wanted me to paint whatever I wanted to paint. So I painted her. I put her in New Orleans, at part of Mardi Gras. And uh, so that's her, Mary Bond Davis in the front. And like I said, the painting is like, uh, this is Juneteenth, celebrating freedom, Texas, you know, the last freedom day of the slaves in Texas. So that's why you see the symbol that is representative of the flag of Texas. And the children and the banjo player, and basically this represents vendors on the side, on each side of the people who are just milling back and forth, almost like a market kind of place and situation. And definitely young and old. Uh, Zydeco, I actually painted Zydeco before I did Mardi Gras, but I wanted to do something. I, I love the Zydeco music, and I'd love, I'd love to see them dance. So I almost went and took it, uh, a couple of classes in it. But just the uh, energy, and I looked at a lot of videos of just uh, people dancing to Zydeco music. And this is what I came up to most representative of the look and feel of the people, as well as the musicians. This is another trip. Um, going to Aruba three years ago. And then I just really, well, anytime it's white sand and turquoise water, I'm going to fall in love. But uh, I also love how colorful a lot of the buildings were. So one of the pieces, this is just one of the pieces I did on Aruba. And again, on this series, it was the first one I did of the country. And I just wanted to deal with the, the water and the sky. So all of these paintings, are, uh, reproductions are oil and are acrylic. So this is acrylic paint in the original. This is oil because of the texture. And the texture of the cloud, that's oil. So you can maneuver it differently. 
I wanted this one to be here because it's an older, much older painting that I did in eight, 1984. And I had gone to uh, Martinique. Uh, yeah, I went to Martinique and I, I fell in love with this fisherman's village that was called Bella Fontaine. That's why this is called Bella Fontaine. And to, to this date, I have never put people in my land of seascapes. So this is the first painting that I actually put people in. The fishermen coming home after the day. They'd be looking in the little window to see people looking out, like the kids looking out for the day after the day after the day. And all of these textures are oil, once again. But back when I was doing this painting, the whole thing was oil, 1984. So the boats and the houses and everything. And uh, oils take a lot longer to dry. So this painting took quite some time to do, but again, with this painting, all of these areas here are anywhere from six to eight coats of paint. So this would take just as long as it would take to do this, but only this would take a lot longer to dry. Okay, and then over here, the original painting of this is actually four by five feet. So, so this is mad four by five feet, and it's a tribute to Nina Simone. There was an exhibition that traveled, well, actually it only um, happened with uh, the exhibit in Atlanta, Georgia, but there were several artists that were chosen, and we all had to paint a painting that had something to do with Nina Simone, and that was that same size, four by five feet. Um, what I decided to do is deal with the fact that she has a cultural center that's named after her in Ghana. That's why you see some of the kente and some of the feeling of Africa around her. If you saw the actual painting, you could actually see the texture and all her little braids and stuff. It's, it's really thick. So can you imagine that this is four by five feet? Okay, I'm five feet two, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's enormous. So you see, the, you see the texture in the hair, and then the hair is where it's oil. That's the only way that you can really show that thickness. And actually, these paintings, you can just feel it, you can actually feel the hair in it. This is from a series I started last year. Now I've done 14 paintings. Again, these are all bigger. This is not as big as Nina, but uh, I'm done, doing a series on Haiti. And so this is a beach in Haiti called Chow Chow Beach. And I, in doing the research, I found this bay and I've never painted the water coming in like that, normally the water is going straight across. To give it a feeling of a bay water coming in. And then I added all the children. I just made these kids up on my own. Um, you know, their little pails and the bigger ones and all, you know, in interaction. But this is their little day on the beach. When um, President Obama was first elected, I uh, painted this painting, which is called Fire Rainbow Obama. And a play aunt of mine had sent me a photograph of a fire rainbow, which I've never seen before. Have any of you seen a fire rainbow? There's only certain states, Midwest, I believe, that, that there are actually fire rainbows. Uh, and this was a dynamic one. Usually they're like, more like spitfire. You know, it's not as big as this. So I decided that that's who he is, and especially at the beginning, to us, was hope for the future, so therefore, a rainbow, the hope, and then a fire because it's exciting and, and all of that. And then later I realized he was a Leo. He's a Leo, so he's a fire sign anyway. I didn't even first have that one in mind when I was doing it. Then I started painting people from all over the world, beginning with his parents. And then I had no intention of putting him in this painting at all. And he kind of just showed up there. <laughs> and Michelle showed up there. And these are like... Uh, his step-grandmother, his sister, you know, it's representative, but that just, just happened. And then when I first unveiled this painting, uh, there was someone in the audience that told me who else was there. And that's the grandmother and that's the two little girls. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes when you're, when you're painting, I, I know when I'm painting, I don't know what's going to come up in the painting. Like the latest painting that I've done, uh, celebrating the dream and uh, March on Washington, but particularly I have a dream speech. There's two people in that painting that people have decided it's Dr. King. But I didn't intentionally paint Dr. King. So if, I'll show you what I mean. Let me show you. And you, you tell me who is Dr. King. Let's see. Anyone? 
any ideas? Okay. How many would say, let me, let me do by hands, how many would say was this man here? Okay. And how many people would say was this man? Okay. Most everybody decides that's who that is. And it, and it makes sense because I was trying to do more of the words and, and the all kind of elements from the speech, but he's kind of, he, to me, he was a choir conductor. But he is the choir conductor because in the speech, uh, if you go back and read it, there's so much reference to singing and song. So that's why I decided to paint it as a choir. And then the elements of black, white, Jews, Gentiles, Catholic, Protestant, you know, and then he's kind of like that. So he does look like he's conducting that. And this is the part about all the children of black and white children, but of course now multicultural. Um, so that's the latest piece. But he popped up, he popped up, so what can I say? <laughs> uh -huh. At the bottom, on the left, uh, the lady in the red, I kind of like, picture her to be like Rosa Parks. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, someone told me that this looks like Coretta. <laughs> <laughs> so see, to me, that's one of the things that I changed my, well, I developed a style of painting, which is featureless, but I, do, I did learn how to uh, paint people portraits that look just like them. The eyes will follow you wherever you went. Wild and domestic animals that, when I was painting wild and domestic animals, I knew no one was going to ever steal anything out of my apartment because you came in and monkey and bears and tigers were looking at you everywhere you went. So I learned to do that, but I wanted to find a way, and I challenged myself to find a way to paint people that you felt them, you felt their attitude, their culture, if they're happy, sad, whatever, without the features, but just by the body postures and what they were doing. So it, it works well because I've done 17 children's books, and children are able to go in and put themselves in the book, uh, as well as I've had adults fight over who was who in a, in a painting that was their sister, that would know that's my cousin, you know. So it works on all ages. But that's pretty much it. Any questions? No? If you want to write a paper for extra credit, now's your chance. <laughs> a big chance. She's right here. Yeah. Well, you can always ask me in private. I know some people don't like to ask me. But I, I do have um, my business card there with the website on it. If you want to go look at some other work or see the other things I've been doing. Um, but I'm so happy to say that I had a chance to uh, actually sell my first painting when I was 20. So that was amazing to me, to be able to do that. But believe me, I've only had 30 of the jobs since then. <laughs> I've always stuck, so don't think I did some painting 20 and suddenly the star was born. You know? uh, so, and that still goes on. And I've been wanting to come uh, consciously, purposely to this school for over six years, so I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.